this is going to be the biggest uh, controversy in the history of the United States. They treated me so well, uh, but all that changed in 2016 when Donald Trump won the election. And what I realized was, oh my God, some of these news items really did happen. The media wasn't willing to talk about this counter evidence that existed. They control everything. They read our emails, they read our location data, they sell it to intelligence agencies around the world. But the problem that we're facing right now is I found what that project was. That project was called Why aren't the t people on TV talking about what the dissenters are talking? Well, because they're pushing an agenda and they're only selecting people that agree with their agenda. And, um, and if you don't agree, then you're ostracized, you're demonized, and then sometimes you're even murdered. Right? Like, let, let, let me give you an example. Um, Dr. Robert Epstein, he was the former editor-in-chief of Psychology Today. Oh, just, just, just to know, hold on, just for people out there who may not know him, he, he's no way related to Epstein, who didn't kill himself. <laughs> My apologies for saying Epstein. His name is Dr. Robert Epstein. Okay, so Dr. Robert <laughs> yeah. Epstein uh, started in 2012 uh, researching Google's systematic bias. And what he found was that if he could, um, if he could, if he could create a search engine and then hide certain bits of information, then he could take people that self-identified as on the fence, have them research certain topics that he would, you know, tell them to research, and based upon the bias of the search engine, he could turn a 50-50 split into a 90-10 split in any direction wow. from from years of research he concluded that in 2016 the systematic bias of google hiding dirt on hillary clinton produced at least a swing of 2.4 million votes in her direction and at a maximum of 10.5 million votes in her direction so yeah. before 2006 before the 2016 election Dr. Robert Epstein was talking about the search bias effect. What was Google's response? They slandered him as a conspiracy theorist. What did Wikipedia do? They followed suit. They slandered him as a crackneck conspiracy theorist. They uh, cherry picked one of his earlier preliminary studies that had an N size of 24. They ignored all the other research where N was greater than 100. Um, and they said that all of his research was based upon one preliminary analysis and that was it. And that this guy, just this huckster, this fraudster went out and just started, you know, making stuff up in order to be a grifter and attach on to anything because he's desperate. And it's just like, what? This is the guy that's the editor in chief of psychology today. You're calling him like an insane conspiracy theorist slash grifter? Like, <laughs> no, I don't accept that. Okay, I don't accept that, is, that. And this is an example of the pattern that they use to demonize people that are saying the truth. So part of the reason why I disclosed this stuff was because I wanted to help the dissenters that were pointing out the truth of what Google was factually doing and give them ammunition so that their voices could be strengthened. Because you don't have to get 50% of the people in order to crack the consensus. You only need about, you know, 5% or maybe even at a max 10%. And once you hit that 10% threshold, then there's a systematic change that happens in society. Because that 10%, once they get completely bought into an idea, once they see the conclusive evidence that something is true, they will not back down. And as a result, 
systematic all systematic change always happens when there is a core group of people that form about 10% of the population. So my goal with this is to capture 10% of the population, show them the evidence that this is what's happening and convert them into people that are effing woke about Google's censorship bias. And you know who's really made this job a lot easier? It has been Google themselves because they can't keep their hand out of the election cookie jar. They've gone <laughs> through in the last three months and they've systematically disabled Tulsi Gabbard's ad account as soon as she was surging from the post DNC debates, right? She got a surge, people started surging and then Google's like, oops, your ad account went down. And then all the people that were searching for her got bombarded, got bombarded bombarded with ads that were bought from her uh, opponents that were able to buy her keyword. Okay, now this is something that a lot of people don't realize is that Google is selling trademark keywords to the highest bidder. Okay, they're profiting off other people's trademarks. And so a lot of people are like this, like if you have a company, it's called company A, company B, your competitor can buy your keywords your trademark keywords, and they can steal your customers away. So that if you, as company A, want to stay on you know, the top results, you're going to have to pay Google an extortion fee in order to keep your links at the top in the ad section. So this is the trick that Google allowed the competitors to Tulsi Gabbard to do. And but Zach, that sounds more like a gang than a search engine or how about communism <laughs> communism socialism basically what we have is a mafia state and it doesn't matter what form of government you have whether it's capitalism or whether it's communism the mafia state will ruin any form of government and corrupt it i believe that socialism can work i believe that communism can work i believe that capitalism can work i believe that fascism can work as long as you have protections against infiltration from the mafia. I'm talking about the international mafia, the ones that have a disproportionate amount of wealth, like 90%. This is not something that's a conspiracy theory. It was all exposed in a study that was done in Switzerland that took the publicly accessible information of who sat at what boardroom for whatever company around the world. They took all the publicly available information and they mapped it out. And what they discovered is that a group of individual men, that number in about 120, control the entire world's assets. They named this control structure the Global Network of Corporate Control. Okay, mm -hmm. these are the internationalists. They own, I mean, you like, well, how, you know, how, much, how much wealth did they have? Their wealth can't even be measured in a debt currency like the US dollar, okay? Their, their value is measured in tons of gold and the amount of land. And not just land like, oh, I bought a house and I own that land. I'm talking about sovereign land that they don't pay a tax to, okay? Because people think that, they're, that they own a piece of property, but they don't realize is that if you pay tax, oh. you're not, you don't own it, all right? Ownership is not, met. so it's weird it's because like us normies, we don't have a true concept of how real wealth operates, okay? These no, people don't. own the money system. They own the US dollar. Their wealth is unimaginable. And so this is the group that really sets the agenda for all these companies. And it's the reason why you're like, wow, that's interesting. Twitter, Facebook, and Google all banned Alex Jones within two minutes of each other. How does that work? Is it just a coincidence? No, it's this global network of corporate control that's handing, that it's a top down, they handle out an agenda item, and then the placeholder CEOs that are running the company implement that agenda. And if they don't implement that agenda, then they're out. Now, they're always going to operate the agenda because there's a filtering method that keeps these people from arising to the CEO if they show any sort of anti-collectivist sentiment in the way that they talk and the way that they, you know, operate in public, you know, so the people that make it to the CEOs have been highly filtered. And that's the reason why you get people like Mark Zuckerberg, who is the most non-technical CEO of a tech company I have ever seen in my life. I swear, watching that guy makes me feel dumber. 
<laughs> right? And here's the thing, as an insider with Silicon Valley, I was told that if you ever meet Mark Zuckerberg, never, ever, ever ask him how he made Facebook because he hates that question. I'm like, wait a minute. The guy who created Facebook hates people asking about how he made Facebook? That would be like my crowning achievement. I would try to tell everyone what the secret of success is, you know, because I, I care about people's happiness and I want to advance society. But this guy who supposedly made Facebook doesn't ever want to answer the question of how he made Facebook. In fact, he will get very, very angry at the people asking it. So, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's just some of the background that we have on you know how this thing operates and once it became activated that this grand conspiracy was in place um i started to realize that this was they were in the final stages of truly locking down the entire internet infrastructure and that we basically had a last chance to you know expose all of this while the algorithms were still somewhat fair and so I decided that I was going to make my move uh, after I saw them, you know, um, censoring the president of the United States. So I collected 950 pages of documents um, and I reached out to Project Veritas. I delivered them the dossier and then I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited. And then eventually they used the, the intelligence that I had provided them in order to do a sting operation on one of their executive directors got her comfortable, got a little drunk, and then she casually mentioned that, oh yeah, we should never be broken up because if we're all these other companies, then together we can't stop the next, you know, Trump situation in 2020. Like, that's not a paraphrase. That's almost the exact quote. Like, we've got to stop, you know, the next Trump situation in 2020. And so it's just like, there you go. You know, that's the exposure of the, um, of what these people are really thinking on the inside, even though they don't want to say it in public. And so that, mm -hmm. that blew the whole lid. Like once that went live on Project Veritas back in June, um, the internet went really crazy. It was the only thing anyone was talking about for like three days. Now at this time, I did not come out as, as um, I did not come out. I, was, I, was, I, I talked about it, but I talked about it under a veil of secrecy and anonymity. And instead of disclosing all 950 pages, we decided that we're only going to disclose two relevant pieces of documentation. Well, what I hoped was that that was just going to allow me to get this off my chest, warn the American public and the patriots, and give them sort of like a thread that they could start to pull to unravel this whole mess. Unfortunately for um, Google, they decided they were going to start engaging in legal warfare against my myself and they started doing this by sending a very 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 expensive law firm um, to start you know shaking me down and they did this with a series of letters that was demanding access to all of my personal information all my backups um, demanding who you know what information I retained who I had shared it with you know all this stuff and so um, I thought about it and I was like, well, obviously they want to do this because they want to shut this disclosure down. They know what I've seen because they've got server logs. So they know that there is some bad stuff coming. And honestly, it's not too hard for them to figure it out. Like I literally resigned. And the reason for my resignation was because of criminal activity and sedition from the company. Now I didn't say that in a resignation letter. I said that privately to my boss as the reason why I was leaving. I said, I cannot work in a company that is, um, that has active subversion against the president of the United States. Otherwise I am guilty as part of the conspiracy myself. So yeah, that's treason, yes. right? Treason. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. my boss was like, oh. <laughs> but he was just, he was just like totally dismissed it. Like, you know, thought that it was ridiculous. Like I had showed him the evidence before, like he's just a brainwashed, you know, individual. Um, also he's a Chinese national. So, you know, communism and them go together really well. It's like, well, whatever the group thinks we can't go against that because they've got this like Confucian sort of philosophy way of thinking, you know, yes. not, not everyone around the world thinks like people do in the United States. So, um, finally, I was just like, yeah, this is wrong. I got to leave. And then um, a week later, the first disclosure came out. 
Uh, about two weeks later, the law fair started happening with this legal firm. And so I'm like, well, obviously they want to shut me up. Obviously they don't want any more of this to be disclosed. And while I haven't disclosed it, I've got a big, wet, juicy bullseye on the back for a assassination hit job. So I said, you know what? It's time for the American public to know how bad Google really is. So I took all the documents, I printed them out, 950 pages, and I mailed it off to the Department of Justice Antitrust Division in Washington, DC. I then called up Keith and I said, hey, James O'Keefe, I need to, um, I wanna let you know that if I die, then every single document that I've ever given you can be disclosed to the public. And then I went to Twitter and I stated um, that I had activated dead man switch and that if anything happened to me that, um, that all information would become immediately public, right? Google responded by red flagging me with a wellness check and- SWAT team showed up. SWAT team actually showed up. And not only just the SWAT team, it was also people on the rooftops with uh, sniper wow. rifles, not that many, but a few. The SWAT team called in a bomb threat to my house because they saw a tin can sitting next to the gate of my house. And they said, this looks like it could be an incendiary device. And they're like, oh, this wire over here, that could be like a detonation device, even though- Meanwhile, it was like, yeah, it was last night's Campbell's soup or something like that. <laughs> it was actually denatured alcohol. Um, my roommate is a fire dancer, performs on stage. So she just kind of carelessly left this like denatured alcohol. Um, and uh and so they, they well i mean to to be fair that's not that careless i mean you guys are just like she's that actually is quite normal for her job it just so happens that when the swat team's after you they're gonna see that and something's gonna go down right so i didn't answer the door by the way so they didn't even know that i was home um they called in like this bomb threat they shut down from 20th valencia all the way up to like 22nd in valencia the the, the theater by my house was evacuated. The stores were evacuated. Everyone um, was evacuated. Um, and it was a really bad sort of situation. They're all trying to get me to come out. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to come out. Like, just like, I'll, I'll answer any one of your questions over voice chat um, or FaceTime. But no, they, they wanted me out of the house so that they could, you know, ask me these questions face to face. It's totally escalating the situation. And so I, I pretty much refused. But then things started to get like heavy and I was like, well, what are the possible situations? They could make up an excuse saying that they thought that I had um, intentions to hurt myself or bury evidence, which is called extricant circumstances. And so they could just make up an excuse, come into the house and then, you know, maybe they, they shoot me and then it was like, oh, our cameras weren't working. So I said, I am going to resolve this situation by coming out. There's a bunch of people on the streets now Valencia is a very, very busy street. Um, this is entertainment crack to the bystander. Everyone wants a cool video. So I'm going to come out with my hands up and everyone can see it. And if they shoot me, then there's going to be a bunch of, you know, witnesses. So I came out um, with my hands up um, and they detained me. They asked me if I wanted to kill myself or hurt others. Obviously, the answer was no. Um, and then they're like, <laughs> why does Google want to do this? And I went, aha. I knew it was Google that had done this wellness check. So at that point, I got confirmation that it was Google. And then I, um, and then I decided at that point, uh, because they were actually really cool once I showed them a letter that I had given to Google explaining that I had delivered their information to the DOJ. After that, they're like, oh, you're a whistleblower. I was like, yep. And, and then they're like, okay, they de-escalated. They called out the bomb threat. And then the next day, I was on a flight to Washington DC and I was in a safe house because you know I haven't disclosed yet which means that they know that um, they can still get me and so I was you know in a hotel room under a different name I came out to Project Veritas in their video that was released I think it was August 17th 2019 this last summer and uh, that blew up and like I remember when they announced that they were going to release 950 pages and then when they did that, people from around the world started like hitting that download link. And it was just like massive. It was like, you know, it was like, they showed me their inbox. It was like, ding, ding, ding. Like they got an email every single time someone hit the download button. And it was just like, just like 
more than one a second. It was like it was like 10 or 20 a second were like hitting down this download link. And so all of the censorship design documents, all of it went, or all of it that I was able to grab, went out to the public. And now we were able to see like exactly how that they censor. And some of the documents that I've disclosed have been blowing people's minds. And I want to talk to you about some of those things because it goes down the yeah. conspiracy rabbit hole and the true nature of how our society functions. Ready for this? We're, we're into weird, Zach. Hit us with the weird. Uh, yeah, we want to know like the, the craziest thing that you found in these documents. Edge of wonder. Okay, so what I found out was there's something called the YouTube query blacklist. Now, this was a blacklist that Google denied that exists. They said, we don't use any blacklist in our search engine. I was like, I was like, what? And I went like this and I started typing and I, I actually found a blacklist that was named blacklist, right? Like they're perjuring <laughs> themselves to Congress saying that blacklists don't exist, you know? So it's 40 pages. I look in and what do I see? It's covered with suppression targeted against people trying to research false flag attacks on every major like mass casualty event that is out there right i'm talking las vegas stephen paddock anything that associated stephen paddock with anti-trump sentiment was uh removed was blacklisted um anything that you know had a positive correlation between stephen paddock and the dnc was also removed so it was like hey if it's bad for trump boost it up. If it's bad for the DNC, suppress it. And, you know, what I started realizing is that each one of the mass casualty events, you know, this list is not in alphabetical order. It's in chronological order. So you have a mass casualty event. And then what happens is that Google's inserting one line at a time, like all the searches that they're finding people are able to make to try to find YouTube videos that are saying like David Hogg forgot his lines, like David Hogg false flag, David Hogg crisis actor, all of these like searches that people are doing to try to find out if there's a link between you know the false flag you know thesis and a mass casualty event is being systematically censored from the internet okay that's one of the crazy things that i saw the other blacklist that was also created on that day was related to trying to censor the news about um ISIS calling responsibility for the Las Vegas attacks. Um, people reporting that there were multiple shooters at the attacks. Um, and then surprisingly, what I found was there was an entry that didn't belong there. And this, okay, ready for your, for your crazy conspiracy hats to get on? Yeah. What I found was that Google had put in a fake URL that made the URL appear to be linking to breaking news related to Stephen Paddock. What was this website's purpose? This website's purpose was not to cover breaking news. They were there to report on the progress, the technical progress of a collection, a network of scientists working on cold fusion. Interesting. Okay, so they took this okay. Cold Fusion website, which is e-catworld.com, eCatworld, and they started keyword stuffing by appending keywords related to this Las Vegas massacre. Okay, that tricked the censors to blacklist eCatworld.com completely wow. off the Google search index. Whoa. Yeah. How did I know about this? Because I just happened to visit ecatworld.com on a quarterly basis because I'm like, I mean, back when I was asleep, I was like, man, this weirdo conspiracy theory seems to have a lot of prominent scientists that are, you know, that have spent their lives, you know, learning about nuclear physics. They all believe that this is like a real thing and they keep on like putting in all these papers and oh my God, Cornell University is now publishing this stuff. Wait a minute. Is, is this like... You know, so I had this kind of thing. I was like, well, the, the, the consensus from the media is that it's fake, but it's got every appearance that this is legitimate science because now it's being released in peer-reviewed journals. So you're talking about this 
cold fusion aspect, right? Like these scientists are actually making, like, or developing or working on, like, aspect of cold fusion. It's energy. This is like, yeah. this would totally disrupt all of yeah. the different, it's energy disclosure, basically, they were trying to suppress, correct? Yep. That Google, that Google was trying, so then Google was, in, in, like, putting in these keywords to try to block the site so people couldn't find it, correct? So that, That's I mean, right. That's and as a result, they announced on ecatworld.com that they had been de-indexed, that Google was not helping them. And so what they did is they created a .org to replace it. Now, the problem is that all the backlinks that Google uses to rate a site's importance was, um, was based on the .com. So all the .org stuff, you know, there's no backlinks to there. And as a result, it's not considered a, it doesn't have a good like page rank score. And as a result of that, it just, yeah. So the .org was not showing up. I was able to find this and I'm like, well, I work at Google and I've got access to their bug database. So I went into their bug database and I searched for, you know, um, this, this thing. And I came to this blacklist that involved the Las Vegas massacre. And that was like mind blowing. I'm sitting there, I'm like, how does this make sense, right? Like we've got this global warming thing. Why are they censoring free energy? Like, you know, and then I started realizing, I was like, okay, wait a minute. If they're censoring cold fusion, then what that means is that they're censoring it, not because it's fake, but because it's real. And if we assume, we make the assumption that cold fusion is real, then I can make a few predictions. Prediction one, Google is so large as a corporation that in order to hedge their bets and keep their finger on the pulse of the cold fusion technology space, they're going to have themselves a cold fusion lab. But prediction number two, they don't want to contradict the global warming hysteria, okay? which means that their lab that they're using to keep tabs on the whole system will be secret. So, you know, there was no information publicly about this cold fusion lab, but I am a sleuther. I did my research and I found it. I found Google's at the time <laughs> secret cold fusion lab. I reached out to the scientists and I talked to them and, um, and I was like, this is this is like Alice in Wonderland. Like I'm like I'm using. It, it almost felt like I had like, you know, a, a, a new eye that it opened, and I was able to like see through all the BS and make predictions and be able to like uncover this. And so, um, yeah, it turns out that Google had a secret cold fusion lab. It's not so secret anymore. About um, a few months ago, or maybe it was even a year, they announced that they had a cold fusion lab. Uh, but then they said that they had failed to find anything. And um, that's um, In fact, <laughs> you can kind of see that they're hinting that they're going to bring this out because um, I think like a month ago, within the last month, uh, CEO Sundar Pachai said that there were some new clean tech solutions that were going to radically change the energy space. And he was excited yeah. about it. And then um, I also made a prediction to myself that if that I would know when cold fusion was um, being rolled out by a spike in the palladium process uh, prices, which are, which is a necessary input to make these catalytic converters. Now, if you go and you look at the last two years or three years of um, the prices of palladium, what you're going to see is that you're going to see that it's like quadrupled, right? It's like went wow. from something like 600 to like 1800. So it's like tripled actually in three years. And, um, and it's, it's consistently going up now. And this has every indication that cold fusion is being secretly rolled out to places around the world. Um, Andre Rossi, the maker of the cat machine, who I'm friends with, he stated that he's now selling energy. He's not selling the power plant because people can just open it up and see how the whole thing works. And it's a proprietary thing that he has. And so, um, yeah, so cold fusion's real. Uh, global warming's Human caused global Thanks. warming is a psyop to get us to pay for a tax and to make us feel guilty, uh, like the Roman Catholic Church did in the Dark Ages. Like it's it's all part of this mind manipulation that 
so that we will uh, give up our freedoms, we'll give up our prosperity and our sovereignty and give it all up to a centralized one world government that knows better than we do. And uh, usually, before we wrap it up, Ben always likes to ask. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I mean, d because everyone back... You, you don't know, have to explain. Go yeah, ahead. Well, okay. What I mean, what keeps you keep doing what you're doing? What keeps you motivated? Because, I mean, obviously, for you, this can be very dangerous. Although, a lot of insiders do say, once you come out it's, and you're in that public sphere, it's a little bit easier than when you're trying to work in the shadows. But... How has this been for you and why do you, you know, what's your motivation? Yeah, my motivation is um, I was an atheist. Um, I thought that God didn't exist because there would be evidence. Once I saw how controlled the information was and I revisited the Fermi paradox of if all the aliens are out there, how come we don't hear about them? There's one, they give like four reasons or five, but one notable exception is, and by the way, all the reasons are that they, they got to a certain point and they just destroyed themselves, right? That's the only reason that they get for the reason why we don't see all these aliens. But then I came up to a, a really um, obvious solution to the Fermi paradox is that we have made contact, but our governments and our media are not letting us in on the secret. And I started doing math, right? Because you look at the Fermi paradox and it's like, well, there's 100 billion stars in the galaxy. What are the chances that one of those stars would form a intelligence uh, before us? Like we're not even a second generation star. We're like a third, fourth or fifth generation star. And if you look at the scale of the universe, I imagine that God probably formed on one of these second generation planets that, you know, which wasn't completely made up of hydrogen. It was something else. And then this super intelligent dominant life force came to rule the galaxy and that they're the dominant life force. No one can unseat them. They're, they're essentially omnipotent in their power and they exist somewhere in the galaxy. Who knows where? Maybe, maybe the elite know where that is too. But I believe that there's, that there's a prime creator. And if I was a prime creator, I would have a couple of options or rather just two. Exact my ultimate will upon all the different peoples of the stars or allow them to um, be sovereign and free and come to their own conclusions about stuff. Now, what I see is I see the ability for mankind, humankind, to exercise free will, which means that we do not have a totalitarian God in our galaxy. And from that, what I've realized is that it's actually God's will for the people of the galaxy to be free and to be sovereign. And when they talk about the belief of God or whether you don't believe in God, like the esoteric fundamental question that they're saying is, you know, if you believe in God and you understand they're omnipotent, and then you understand that in their omnipotence, they granted us free will, then therefore it is the divine desire of the prime creator that the people of the galaxy will be free. And so if I, once I started to realize that I, 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 I kind of broke down in tears because like for the first time I rediscovered God and realized wow. his, his beautiful majesty that this entity was existing to allow me to have freedom of choice. And so what I realized is that if that's what God believes, then what I need to do is I need to resonate with that vibrational force and that I can then become a vessel for his divine will to, you know, ripple out onto the people of the earth. And so coming forward to this, you know, and, and to understand like what it means to be a vessel, that means that you have to uh, come to terms with your own mortality. I understand that the effort to disclose this information can result in my death. But the thing is, is that um, if I'm dead, I, I'm not going to care. So I decided to take that, pat, that Pascal's wager after a year of contemplating this almost daily. Um, I decided that I was going to take this Pascal's wager. I was going to resonate with the higher powers of the universe and the galaxy. And I was going to do an act that made people free because that's the will of God is to have people to be free. And so I hope that I've been successful with that. And, you know, if something happens to me, then, you know, you can always be rest assured that I was, um, I was acting in a way that was servicing a higher power and that everything that could and will happen to me, I've readily accepted um, because it's worth it. Man, that gave me chills, yeah, Zach. That was awesome, man. Seriously.
That is so great to hear you say wow. all of that. Yeah. Man. And also, like, I, I think it's really good for, you know, uh, it doesn't take long uh, as you're researching this stuff before you come to the conclusion that atheism is one of the biggest psychological operations on our yeah. planet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's the pinnacle of what communism is, essentially. I yeah. mean, you know, and then coming to the and then And now. then it doesn't take long before you start looking into who, who was, who they used to push all of that. You start looking into Darwin, Darwinism. you start breaking some of those things down, you start going into the scientists, and then all of a sudden your world's upside down, especially if, you know, you're not used to that kind of stuff. But, um, Man, uh, thank you so much for being with us and for being the inspiration that you are and coming out and giving everyone out there this information and your message along with that. We can't thank you enough for everything you're doing. I know. This is, seriously, Zach, this was like such a phenomenal interview. I, I'm just like, wow, this is so awesome. Yeah, and hey, so. listen, anytime, anytime, you are welcome on our show to talk about whatever it is that you yeah. feel like you need to talk about. This is, this is, you know, your Go show home. too. So yeah, <laughs> you're, you've got a home here and anytime you need to drop anything or whatever, you just let us know and uh, we'll just set something up. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Well, hey, if it's seriously. my show too, then I want to cut of the profits. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart businessman too, I see. So Zach, tell us like where you can or where people can uh, find you and um, your information, website, anything. Um, yeah, people can follow me on Twitter. Um, Twitter is the social network for politics, and uh, that's where I'm at. And we're challenging Google's power and their grip on the election system and their grip on the information landscape. And so if people feel like they want to help save America, then um, come follow me on twitter.com slash perpetual maniac. That's my username, perpetual maniac. And uh, like and retweet the things that I'm doing that are very important. And the things that are important, you'll know because they're important. So <laughs> please follow me there on twitter.com slash perpetual maniac. And do you have any like anything upcoming that you're working on or are gonna be a part of? Um, yeah, there's a bunch of things that I'm working on, but um, I don't want to give uh, the enemy a heads up on what I'm working on, so they're kind of under wraps. But cool. um, but yeah, I would love to come back on the show and uh, and talk about some more things. I wasn't able to get to everything about the story, and there's some really juicy tidbits. So um, awesome. you know, for everyone out there, subscribe <laughs> to Edge of Wonder because um, they've got really good stuff, and I'll be back. All right, awesome. Zach. Thanks so much, Zach. Thank you. I followed Q within the first week. The stuff that Q was posting was absolutely insane. The turning point for me when I really started to believe it was John yeah. McCain's boot, which the boot to the other leg. Do you understand where the pedophilia like comes into play and why that's being done? How weird do you guys want to go? The weirder, the better. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go down those yeah. rabbit holes. You ready for this? This is Zach with Edge of Wonder, and we'll see you out on the edge.